difficult to run in, in its purest form is as simple as putting on a set of trainers and just seeing how far the body can go. So we're just going through kit checks at the moment and they have to meet every item on the list. And you can see it's pretty extensive. But in the environment that we're in, you, you can't play around with this. The runners have to be able to look after themselves as much as possible. This is a self-sufficient race, that's what we call it and that's what it is. What this brief is about is to make sure that the next five days go as well as possible for you, to make sure you stay nice and safe and to make sure that when we leave this place we leave no mark of us being here whatsoever. We've had a company ethos to try and make sure that we can get as many people to the finish line as possible. This is the Sammy Heartland and officially Europe's last remaining wilderness. You'll find a checkpoint every 10 kilometres on this race. It's our first night and we're in a teepee. As you can see we're uh, lying on the snow apart from the added uh, comfort of a two half reindeer skins each. Glamping at its finest. I'm a little bit frightened that I'm actually sleeping on top of the snow. <laughs> I have never faffed as much in my life as I have today. You've never what? Like faffed around, you oh, know, yeah. like <laughs> packed and repacked. Yeah. And done things like a million times over. Tomorrow's plan then. 60K. It's the long stage. When we have a longer stage, the field is spread. There are all the systems, there are all the safety systems, that keeps everyone safe. And we are the safest cold race in the world, there's no doubt about it. We can get to anyone on this course within 30 minutes, tops. We can get someone out of here within 30 minutes if we need to. So we are the, one of the safest races for our systems, we don't take risks and we're always passing the runners. Didn't see that well, but it's all right. Okay. Yeah, ice, ice on my sleeping bag, you know. Between minus 15, okay. minus 25, average temperature, which is great. Visibility should pick up as well towards the end of the day. But we're about to lead them down to the start line. Some people are very focused and really thinking through everything that's gonna happen in the day. For some people, this is just anticipation. This is fear now. They, they've just withdrawn into themselves a little. It's, it's a huge challenge. Stage one, we're at checkpoint two, so they're 17k in. Uh, they got 60k to do today, and by this point now, they've kind of figured out their layering system, so they know that you now they've, they've when the first 17k happens, they're kit on, kit off all the time to get it right. By this point, they're in a bit of a swing of things, and they can they can push on. So they're coming through, and they're in pretty good spirits. We have had one dropout already, though. Uh, unfortunately, he's put his foot into soft snow like this and as you can see once you step off the trail your foot can dip right in really easily he's pulled his groin unfortunately so that's his race over eight hours hmm. okay four to go walk in the park it's a nice park raving mad that's me yeah. Where were the other runners? They're all past the checkpoint. Yeah. On these races, we tend to get uh, people that are high up in companies, CEOs, directors, army personnel from all different types and backgrounds. 
Uh, we, we get people that just have to save every penny they have for years in order to just get on that start line. But the one thing that kind of unites them all is a shared experience and they're all wanting to, to see how far they can go, to see what their, their breaking point is and see what their end limit is. So even though they might come from different walks of life or be there for different reasons, they all want the same thing. Whether that's a journey of self-discovery or to inspire others, fundamentally they, they all want to grow. We are, uh, I think we are six locals and we're taking care of the logistics and marking the trails and setting up the checkpoints and so on. The temperature's absolutely plummeted, so it's at about minus 28, minus 30 at the minute. Uh, and when you're at the end of the stage, that's when everything starts to fail on you. So we've got a lot of our team kind of out there at the minute, just shadowing people. But we've also had a lot of DNFs. A couple of sickness, vomiting, which tends to happen. We've got some two unfortunate injuries and strains. Pretty cold out there, it's a long day for them, so hopefully they can, uh, they can come in over the next couple of hours and get some sleep. We'll probably still do another five, ten minutes in bed if you packed, but this is just a wake up call to get water on. We're down to one or two burners at the minute, so if you're wanting to get up now, put some water on, have some breakfast. After a stage, some will get a solid night's sleep just from being exhausted, some will have broken sleep throughout this entire trip. It, it is a, a case of uh, taking ownership of. Of, of the day and once you get up even though you feel broken it's it's all about just pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and putting a brave face on and, and getting ready to to address the next day and it really is a case day at a time if you think too far ahead in these things especially when you're exhausted it just seems like an overwhelming challenge you, know, you don't think about running 150 miles through the arctic you, you think about running five and then the next five and then the next five if you go into this with a, a strategy to focus on everything from the outset and um, do it all in one big chunk, you know, it, it becomes a lot harder. to drop, which puts nine out of the race. We're just about left with a half field, but everyone that's here is looking really strong, so I'm happy about that. Today, it's looking similar weather as yesterday. Big clear sky, 28 degrees out there at the minute, minus of course. It could go as low as minus 32, minus 34 on those lakes. It depends on air pockets. Today, you're on a one massive lake. Just very conscious of the possibility of hyperthermia or frostbite. Mentally, yesterday was a bit easier than the first day, just simply because the distances were a bit shorter and sort of a bit more used to the cold, more used to what, you know, what's going to happen. I mean, the, the cold, at particularly at this point, is so extreme, minus 30s. The thing I've ever experienced before. So the stresses that's put on the human body are exceptional. It's one. Of, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. So um, you know, I'm not going for glory or anything like that. I literally just want to finish it. Hopefully, um, with all my body parts intact, that would be really good. Um, but yeah, uh, anything more than that would be. Uh, our ethos really as a company is to try and get as many people to the finish line as possible and um, we pick our team around that ethos so we pick the best of the best that we can and there's no doubt about it that if we didn't have this team in place there'd be people that wouldn't get to the finish line with the care of the medics and the Sammies and everyone's experience that over the years and these kind of things it, it helps people get to the finish line and that's what we want. This race wouldn't have been possible without the Salmon people helping it. I don't think there's 
anyone more used to the environment and the temperatures than we are. We're so exposed to it each day. I mean, it's cold being out, like sitting on your ass if it's minus 20. But it's not that cold to be out uh, driving snowmobiles, herding reindeers, even though it's minus 35, because you're constantly moving, just like the runners are. So, if that answered your question. When you're at the end of your calories and you're starting to really dip into um, a dark place and you're really low on energy, just focusing on that next checkpoint is a key and critical part of a race strategy. And as you get towards the end of a race, just knowing that you, you, know, you might be an hour or two hours away from the next person it, it makes the race a lot more manageable mentally for people. Tough? Appreciate it. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm nothing. Sit down, Can you sit down? No, no. Jesus, that'd be the end of me if I sit. I think I'm on the lakes. Uh, the forest is a bit undulating, but... Uh, but they're too long. You can see forever, and you can never get there. We're pushing each other at quite a fast pace, so I'm now absolutely knackered. But that's probably more to do with the fact that I've done about 76 miles over the past couple of days. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. We're down to 16 runners. We've had nine drop out. Um, with this temperature range, all of our team are on like a state of red alert. You know, we're ready to react really quickly because these temperatures, things can happen fast. I'll heat this up and then I can give it to you. You can use it later. When when we're in that state of you know, red alert or that top level of, of risk, we're all pent up, we're all ready uh, to react. So hopefully when we get the last person back tonight, we can all relax. How are you feeling this morning, Jeff? I've got really tired. Really tired? And my ankle's a bit swollen. Is it? Mm. Riding's okay. Yeah. I can see that everyone's tired and everyone's battered, but one last push and you'll be there. Checkpoint at a time. Once you've done today, that's a massive stage ticked off. You've just got 15k to do tomorrow. But I'm excited because it's, well, it's the last real day, really, because tomorrow's so short. I always think from checkpoint to checkpoint and I know there's a finish line today and I reach it anyhow. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go guys, well done. Have a good day. I'm glad it's day four, you know. Having the job of race directors it's probably one of the most rewarding jobs I could ever think of. You know, you, you end up being in these life-affirming, life-changing adventures with people. You know, these are often, for most people, a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and it, it fundamentally changes them as a person, and it's with them forever, and you have been a small part of that. Kilometers go by very, very slowly, um, especially towards the end. But yeah, I'm happy that it's done. So it feels good that we've just got a 15k tomorrow. Um, so just coming past the second to last checkpoint, I was just sitting there for about a kilometer, just thinking about like a really nice, big, fat piece of steak, a really big piece of fat down the outside, just nicely browned off, 
with, with chips, Bernays sauce. Sink in the middle of the line. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Final day. It's a 15k stage and they run from the Arctic line all the way into Yacht Mock. The finish behind me. Uh, quite, a, quite a short stage in comparison to the rest of them, um, but it's been brutally cold again today. So. Good yeah. <laughs> yeah, really good, thank you. That was a really good stage, so perfect conditions and uh, no managed to blast through it quite well. So brilliant, very pleased to sober. Yeah, very pleased. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On day one I wasn't sure I was gonna get there, but um so pleased I did. It was what a great event, what an absolutely great event and great team, so great job beyond the ultimate. Why why should people do this? Um to find the edges and uh going and find where the edges of your life are, do something special. It's just an ultimate test of endurance, um, you know, the terrain, the, the climate, the whole race, it's not just running, it's looking after yourself, doing your admin, um, meeting all these guys from all over the world, but, you know, the organisers, it's just a great event, real good feel factor, so that's why. It's pretty wrecked, my legs are in bits, my got blisters all over my feet. My actual biggest question was going to be, why do you do it? Uh, I think it's a combination of things really. I like to challenge myself, sort of see where, push the boundaries, see what I'm capable of, both um, physically and also you know, mentally, and also going, going on adventures, going to some really remote parts of the world, beautiful um, places, but also awesome experience, a real challenge, physically and mentally, and um, you know, that's, what, that's why I came. And that's some amazing views, amazing landscape. And meet some great people as well along the way. Well, it's always a sort of bittersweet feeling to finish. Um, obviously, you're, you're satisfied, you've completed the challenge, but but I already feel a little bit sad that it's over because it's just been so beautiful out there. And I just I love the I love the simplicity of your day as well. You, all you've got to do that day is just get from there to there and stay alive. Uh, yeah, very happy, mate. Very happy. Um, good day today, actually. It was a nice short day, 15k, so a couple of hours. Nice to be able to actually run um, and enjoy the scenery. So, uh, yeah, over the moon. I think it's good to push your boundaries. I think it's good to challenge yourself a little bit. Um, I think, even though at the time it's very hard, um, the sense of achievement that you get afterwards is, is pretty fantastic. You go to the Alps, you can always see roads and cars and telecabins and things, whereas here you just see a kind of ocean of snow and mountains and there's no noise, there's no man-made machinery. Uh, it's, it's a proper wilderness. It's, um, it's a pretty unbelievable place to spend some time, actually. How does it feel? Uh, with this in my hand? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Crossing the finish line is always a great feeling.